But when you have fact after fact after fact, here's a book that came out in 1999, available everywhere, called Hitler's Vienna, A Dictator's Apprentice by Bridget Heyman. Now I'm going to read you a few things from Bridget Heyman's uh, book, Hitler's Vienna, because it deals with Hitler and uh, and it was it was Hitler Jewish. Um, it refers first of all to a uh, a book by Hitler's lawyer for much of the Third Reich, or a pamphlet actually, and this guy's name was Hans Frank. Hans Frank, F-R-A-N-K. Hans Frank was half Jewish. This is Hitler's lawyer through the Third Reich. Now, as we're going to see, a nasty fight broke out between the world powers, uh, which everyone knows, called World War II. And Hans Frank was hung at Nuremberg, as many of the Nazis were, because of the there was such a uh, animosity going between the factions at that point. And incidentally, I should mention here, we're... We, we need to, I think I, I thought I made this clear, but I want to make sure that I made it clear. Just as we're not talking about the average German who joined the Nazi party, we're talking about the Nazis, the top Nazis, Hitler and the boys. We're not talking about the average Zionist Jew in the world then or now who wants a homeland. Uh, we're talking about the top Zionists who were cooperating with the Nazis, which is probably less than one-tenth of one percent. Now, uh, the theological, I have theological objections to the way Israel has been founded and developed, and we'll, I'll mention that briefly, although that's not the main focus of this tape, through referring to the books to Father Fahey. But we're talking here about that minute element of super criminals who were cooperating with each other on all sides. Well, anyway, Hans Frank was Hitler's personal attorney. Uh, half Jewish, he was the former governor general in Poland, uh, and he made, according to Bridget Heyman on page 48 and uh, 49, uh, his, his last pamphlet, Make Truly Explosive Material Public. Shortly before he was executed, so this is kind of like a deathbed confession, he wrote his memoirs, and then she gives it in German, I'm Angischt des Gaussians. I probably uh, butchered that, meaning facing the gallows or it's often printed as in the face of the gallows. Hans Frank, where it says, where, and she says, where he mentioned that following uh, the following bona fide scoop, at the end of 1930, he wrote, Hitler had shown him a letter commenting that this was a disgusting blackmail story of one of his most repulsive relatives concerning his, Hitler's, ancestry, unquote. The relative had dropped hints to the effect that, quote, in connection with certain remarks in the press, one would be well advised not to broadcast certain circumstances of our family history, unquote. Uh, Bridget Heyman goes on to say the point was that, quote, Hitler had Jewish blood in his veins and therefore had scant credentials for being anti-Semitic, unquote. We'll get into this. This was a William Patrick Hitler who was blackmailing the Fuhrer, and we'll get into that. Frank claimed that after Hitler directed him to check confidentially into the matter, he found out, quote, from all kinds of sources, unquote, which he did not want to divulge, the following, quote, before the child was born, Hitler's grandmother, Schnickelgruber, had been a cook in Graz in the household of a Jew by the name of Frankenberger, that she had become pregnant by the son of the house, and that for the next 14 years, she received child support payments for little Aloy, that's Hitler's father. There had been a, quote, correspondence between the Frankenbergers and Hitler's grandmother, which went on for years, and whose basic thrust it was that everyone had tacitly acknowledged that Schnickelgruber's illegitimate child was born under circumstances that obliged Frankenberger to pay child support. Frankenberger, again, being a Jewish banker. According, now that's the end of the quote, according to his own racial laws, Hitler thus would have been a, quote, quarter Jew and not been able to produce the necessary ticket into the Third Reich, quote, the proof of Aryan descent. Frank was conspicuously ambiguous in leaving the impression that he did not find this theory implausible. And then she goes on and on from there, and uh, you can read the whole thing. Uh, but Frank says in other parts of the pamphlet that when he went down to Hitler's birthplace to see what investigators could find out, that he found out 
that Hitler was uh, uh, Hitler from a number of sources that Hitler's birth certificate uh, and so forth indicated that this was his his ancestry. Although, it, again, I've given you the name of the pamphlet and the face of the gallows, so uh, someone can check it out in case I've slightly misstated a nuance here. Uh, now, Hitler, as you remember, when he went into Austria, incidentally, went down and bulldozed the graveyards down there in uh, near his birth tape place in Brunel on the inn and destroyed the records. And as Radisbone said, when we find somebody who's under the microscope destroying evidence, we usually call him guilty. Now, by that I don't mean that guilty uh, is someone who would be Jewish is guilty, but Hitler in trying, be, trying to be the head anti-Semite in the world, trying to cover up, it looks like he's trying to cover up some facts. Now, we also go on to here, I want to read one other part from from Bridget Heyman here, and this has to do with uh, uh, what she uh, uh, found out in some of her other researches, which I think is quite incredible here. And this is about the time that Hitler was being raised to power in 1933. She says, now scores of reporters started searching for Hitler's alleged Jewish relatives. It was discovered that the name Hitler appeared among Jewish families in the small town of Polna in Moravia in Poland and that there was a Jewish merchant in the Leopstadt district who claimed to be a relative of Hitler via Polna. In Warsaw, some Jewish families by the name of Hitler officially applied for a change of name adverting to the anti-Semitic German politician. This is on page 46 of Hitler's Vienna by Bridget Heyman. The summer of 1933, this is when Hitler was, had just come to power, brought new headlines. Ludovo Novini in Prague reported on July 6th that in Polna, people, uh, people mere mentioning, uh, excuse me, people were mentioning an Abraham Hitler from the 18th century as Hitler's ancestor. Deutsch Freyhardt of Saarbrücken wrote on July 6th, quote, the Jewish Hitler family with sources. Ostere Eiches Morgenblatt, as I say, I'm probably butchering these, wrote on July 13th, quote, Brown Hitler and his yellow spot. I guess it was kind of a play on words of the Brown Church or something. Vorlberger Walk wrote, quote, so he did have a Jewish grandmother after all, Mr. Hitler. No, I mean, referring to Mr. Hitler. And she gives her sources for all these. In the meantime, Bekesi had become an editor for Ostere Eiches Abedblot and published new revelations starting on July 12, 1933. For example, on July 14, 1933, quote, awesome traces of the Hitler Jews in Vienna was the subject with photographs from Hitler graves in the Jewish section of Vienna's Central Cemetery. In other words, gravestones that said Hitler on them, of Hitler's who had died. And a cookbook by one Rosalie Hitler written in Hebrew. On July 19th, uh, uh, Bacassi's newspaper even printed the headline, Hitler's Jewishness officially confirmed. This time the newspaper published the pedigree of a Jewish Heidler family in Polna. And she goes on, and I, I would say that she makes the case that that headline was exaggerated there slightly. What I'm pointing out to you, though, is all the different arrows pointing in the same direction here. Uh, so at any rate... Uh, and it says in a footnote that Hitler, Brown Hitler was a play on the Brown shirts. So this is just, again, a part of what she repeated. But these Hitler's, uh, Hitler revelations of being Jewish were all over small papers in Germany and other uh, uh, countries at that time. So there's, again, here's a whole book. This is an establishment historian. And she's not trying to make the case that I'm making, but that's evidence she puts in her book in trying to put the rest this idea that Hitler was part Jewish. Well, as Ratisbon says, we thought that all socialism was of Jewish origin except Nazism, national socialists. And by the time you get done looking at all the, this research, I think we can conclude that all socialism uh, was of a Jewish source in the 20th century. Now, in a minute, we're going to finish this section off by reading from the Jewish Connection, a book put out in the last few decades, probably about 1970s, by M. Hirsch Goldberg, which is just a lot of fun facts about the Jewish Connection to things. 
and the Jewish connection to Hitler in this book. Uh, but before that, I have got to go back to read, as we're going through here, some, it occurred to me I forgot to read two important things. The first thing is about, from remember the Bridget Heyman book, Hitler's Vienna, came out in 1999. Listen to this. Hitler had this straight... What do we make of this? If, if the man's not trying to hide something, what do we make of this? I mean, Hitler's an intelligent guy, detail-oriented and all that kind of stuff. She quotes on page 48, Hitler did not want to hear anything about relatives. I've got no idea about family history. She's quoting him here, <coughs> according to one source at the uh, William Patrick uh, uh, interview when Hitler and William Patrick, the nephew from Ireland, met. In that area, I'm an absolute dunce. Even when I was younger, I didn't know I had relatives. I've only learned that since I became Reich's Chancellor. This reminds me of uh, Madeleine, Al Madeleine Alb Albright saying she just found out she was Jewish when she became Secretary of State. Uh, can you imagine that? A family with survivors, Holocaust survivors, not mentioning it to, to her till she's Secretary of State. But he says, again to repeat, I've only learned that, that, that I have relatives since I became Reich's Chancellor. I am an entirely non-familial being, a non clanning being by nature. That's not my cup of tea. I only belong to my fo folkish community. And then on page 51, she quotes, going to this, again to this interview with where he invited William, Penn, William Patrick Hitler to come see him when he was threatening to blackmail him. When Hitler became famous, his poor Irish relatives when he did not know, whom he did not know, saw their chance to make money and gave interviews to newspapers in England as Hitler's relatives. Subsequently, in 1930, now this is before he came to power, Hitler had 19-year-old Patrick, whom he had never met before, visit him in Munich, where he told him and his half-brother, Aloy, that he, he forbade them to do things like that, give interviews about the family. He is supposed to have said that the family should not believe they could become famous at his expense, they're quoting him here from a report of the meeting, I guess, from William Patrick Hitler. Quote, although she makes it clear in here, she gives a source if you read it, if you go to the book and so forth. It's footnote 215, but she says, quote, you're going to do me in. Hitler is talking to William Pat Patrick Hitler. Now, again, what do we make of this from a grown man when I'm about to read? You're going to do me in. How carefully I have always kept my private life and my personal affairs from the press. People must not know who I am. They must not know where I'm from and who my family is. Not even in my book did I allow one word to come out about these things. Not one word, Mein Kampf in other words, not one word about his family. And then all of a sudden there's a nephew, a nephew. They will start investigating. They will stick snoopers on the tracks of our past, unquote. In a newspaper interview in 1939, Patrick Hitler even said that his uncle had started sobbing and in his anger shed tears. Again, the great theatricist. What do we make of such talk? I'm asking you, the, the person watching this tape. So that's from Hitler's...